all today is a wonderful day and it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the 12th foundation day of our very own great lakes institute of management great lakes today is a leading hub of business education creating a legacy of strong competent and future ready leaders it has embodied the spirit of excellence deeply rooted in innovation and sense of responsibility for all these years and today we all are very pleased to celebrate this auspicious occasion in a physical manner we are also very pleased to welcome the chief guest for today mr raja datta country head devices and services partnership southeast asia and india google singapore so you can put on your video thank you so much thank you uh, so to formally begin our program we would like to invite our respected director dr dibashish sanyal to say a few words on this auspicious occasion <clears throat> on behalf of uh, great lake institute of management gurgaon and on personal behalf i would like to extend a very warm welcome to each one of you present over here and to our chief guest uh, and the keynote speaker today in on the foundation day dr raja datta uh, our chairman uh, mohan lakham raju is going to join us shortly uh, and uh, i also on his, in his absence here i would like to uh, also extend a very warm welcome to uh, our chairman mohan lakham raj respected faculty members uh, mr gautam over here from the board uh, my lab staff members over here and dear dear students uh, online presence over here and who are online and also my alum it's a great day for us uh, as we uh, as we celebrate our 12th foundation day we are stepping into the 13th year that means we are going to become teens and like teens are we are the ones who are and i can see that from last year on was pre teen scenario was there i could see lot of energy in everyone and like teens are in teens grow as they grow to the adolescent phase their intelligence also grow uh, exponentially and we can see that for the publication we just had the celebration of the examination exhibition research exhibition is just a symbol how intellectually we are growing year on year and i'm quite sure the 13 teen words it will be a big boom in this too uh, so we are catching up with the with the effort uh, environment that we are in and that's is most important for the institute everywhere what we are doing we are doing we are going for excellence to be happy i'm happy to report on this day since last foundation day we have achieved some good milestones so one was the nba accreditation which is long we, we, it was standing because of covid and finally we got a uh, a very good uh, points which allow us to apply for autonomous status and so a big hand to all of you all for this achievement uh, because it was a contribution not only of the faculty and staff members but many students contributed also we have also had last year the another important milestone we have achieved after the india accreditation aiu membership this means a lot to you people students because with aiu 
Now, if you wanted to study abroad, it will be that much easier. Or to get a job in somewhere, or to migrate somewhere more so, migrate in Canada and others, give, they give points for the degree you get. And once AIU approved, they, you get some more extra points because your, uh, uh, your institute is recognized. So it's a big thing for us and more so to the students henceforth. We have also got the AACSB membership last year. And, that was, and we have started our process about two years back. And the best thing is that our application of eligibility, they call, has been accepted. And we are on it. And mentor will be allotted most probably by March. It's a great important thing which is happening in our lives, our history, which we are going to create shortly. We have signed two important MOUs with International. One is with, uh, uh, with Deakin University, Australia. And another one is EMAA, one of our top uh, management institute in Morocco. We are expecting to start a program with them, immersion or somewhere, this year, most probably, if things live in that way it is now. We have launched two journals last year. It started off in January, but the journal was came uh, thereafter during the last foundation year and this foundation year. One was, of course, the management review and transformation. The editor, uh, the managing editor being uh, Dr. Preeti. And another is Journal of Infrastructure Development, the managing editor being Bapad Tamukhapadha. We initiated an important program, and that I think is one of its kind in the country. It's called Luminaire, which is actually an open digital research platform. We had the first one last year on 17th of November, and the next one is going to happen on 17th of March. I, I, I invite all of you across the country to, and students also, to participate in. It's a unique uh, program to augment research, not only to great lakes, but across the universities, especially keeping in mind universities where researchers do not get option or the facility to hear good scholars and to get their paper or abstract reviewed by uh, uh, eminent uh, research scholars. Not taking much of a time, let me go to the we did some extraordinary things as far as every dimension of this institute. Most important is that student learning. The feedback of our student is, which we got in PGPM, it is about 4.5 average. It's a great achievement. And across in this virtual and on, uh, on uh, in-person classes, the average has been pretty good. Also in PGDM, uh, it is about, again, 4.5. 4.45, it's around 4.5. So our both the programs, as far as faculty performance, whether it is uh, our core faculty or visiting faculty, everyone has performed well in the core. In core, actually, mostly our full-time faculty has performed. So it's a great, great achievement, I will say. Coming to research, our publication has gone up tremendously. Total publication, creating articles, taking uh, journals, publication, book chapter, uh, then everything. Uh, it was 60, 2021. It has climbed up to 82 in 21, 22. And most important, the publication category has gone up very well. This year, first time you're having eight star, four or five A, you've got B, about 14 of them. It has climbed from four to 14 this year. Huh? It is a really, really a big achievement. So we are doing fantastic. I'll request, we had an exhibition about five, uh, at four o'clock, 3.34. I will urge my students over here and all the students online, whenever you get an opportunity, see what your faculty is doing. See where you are. See your faculty, how they are doing. In, you see only in their class, but outside class, they are publishing a lot. So it's worth seeing uh, what they are doing, and, and you can do much better also with their input. Coming to placement, the placement has been fantastic. And this year, the highest CTC in PGDM program uh, PGD, uh, yeah. PGDM program has moved from 15.50 in 2021 to 17.90 in 2022. A big achievement, I say. The average CTC has moved from 9.02 to 10.53. A big jump, a big hand to the placement, and everyone associated with them. PGPM, the highest salary has moved from 18.83 to 19.30 lakhs. It's a big, 
big task, I tell you. Average has moved up from 12.15 to 15.60. So again, a big jump. And students, you ought to be, students who are sitting over here or online who have performed well, congratulations to you all once again. You are did, did well. The admission, and I, I kept it last because we have really done something great over here. There has been tremendous increase in application. I'm talking about GGN, Gleam Gurgaon. The application Gurgaon has gone up by 40% this year. 40% this year. And we are expecting about 9,000 applications to come for Gurgaon, who have shown interest in Gurgaon. Some of them, of course, have shown interest in Chennai. But the, the number of people showing interest in Gurgaon has climbed up by 40%. With that, the good news for many, sad news for some, the cutoffs are going to go up. Uh, and henceforth, it'll, be, it'll, it'll go out not from henceforth. Huh? So you can see that happen. So overall, if I see, I, I don't want to take much of a time, uh, the year, foundation year 2021 to two, this year, we have been a fantastic year. Uh, we had COVID. We are one of the only institutes, I'll say, to start off session, physical session in last, uh, we allowed students to come to the campus in last August, and we many people allowed them to come to campus where classes to happen online. But we were the one who had taken the risk and had online uh, physical classes for the students that time also. And I must support the uh, congratulate students. They did accommodate. Uh, they did so get scolding, but they accommodated that. It was good that y'all did it, and I will. I look forward uh, to. We'll take calculated risk whenever it is possible. But I hope this COVID doesn't recur and we can have normal classes without anything, at least from next academic year. So with this, I, I once again would like to thank all of you and again uh, extend a warm, warm welcome to this foundation, 12th foundation ceremony. Thank you so much. We would now like to invite Mr. Mohan Lakmaraju, founder and CEO of Great Learning, Vice Chairman Great Lakes Institute of Management, who is present here with us virtually to address the gathering. Thank you. So hi, everyone. And it's great to um, speak to you, even though it's uh, virtually. Uh, I can't believe it's the 12th Foundation Day. It just feels like um, just yesterday that we were talking about uh, setting up the institute and, uh, you know, so it's great to see us having come this far. Um, I apologize for not being there in person. Uh, today happens to be the, my father's death anniversary and I had to be here to uh, do the puja and all of those things. And we also, um, you know, had relatives over. Um, Gautam was there uh, with me in the morning in the puja, but then he rushed to get there to be in person. Uh, one of us had to be here. So, so that's why I'm joining you virtually. Uh, I would have loved to be there in person otherwise. Um, so I'm sure Debashish mentioned uh, uh, many of uh, the aspects that I'm going to touch upon, but I think it's worth, uh, you know, it, it, it's worth acknowledging it. Um, the past two years, and we, had, we didn't have a Foundation Day function last year, but the past two years have uh, been challenging, but quite remarkable for the Institute and for our um, development and growth in general. And I think it's a true testament to how um, all the stakeholders involved um, kind of rose up to the challenge and actually made the most of the circumstances that uh, were thrown at us, right? And I think it's quite remarkable how we've been able to manage that. And starting from, um, you know, just the students and the faculty, uh, you know, we like most other organizations, we hadn't really done a whole lot of uh, learning online before COVID, but uh, I was quite, uh, you know, very pleasantly surprised to see how quickly everybody adapted uh, to the online mode of learning and how well uh, it was delivered. I think, um, you know, our uh, ratings for the various sessions that happened online were as good, if not better, than, uh, than the classroom ratings, right? And so I think uh, overall the course delivery and the teaching learning process actually went on quite well, uh, though it can never be the same as 
you know things that happen in class but i think um, all the faculty did a fantastic job and the teacher and the students uh, you know rallied and uh, made the most of what was available to them and you all did a very good job i think uh, you know this was all very ably supported by the support staff the program office and all of those folks you know again it's new challenges thrown at them uh, so they 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 adapted rallied very well so kudos to all of those folks um, you know and hopefully there's a lot of good lessons that we have learned out of that that we can actually use uh, in making our regular operations even more efficient and even more effective um, now the other thing that has happened is that the faculty have actually used the time that has been made available to them because they didn't have to commute or because they didn't have um, you know as many um, uh, uh, demands on their time to actually really double down on research it's been unbelievable how uh, productive different faculty have been in actually um, uh, doing research and and converting that into publications it's been phenomenal and um, and I think a lot of that has translated into a recognition for the institution. Uh, we've achieved several milestones uh, that are very, very prestigious, be it uh, our MBA accreditation, AMBA accreditation, uh, AIU um, recognition. So I think these are all very good feathers on the cap. So I, I congratulate Debashish um, and his team of faculty and support staff in achieving all of those milestones. I think those are quite phenomenal. You know, so there's clearly a lot to be very grateful for, to be very proud of, um, you know, on this 12th Foundation Day. At the same time, uh, we had the best placements that we've ever had in our history. You know, so I think students did very well to take advantage of the opportunities that uh, were presented to them. You know, this, this year, uh, given everything that has happened during um, the, the COVID phenomenon, there's been a lot of scramble for talent on behalf of companies. And I think our students really took advantage of it. Our CCS team has done a phenomenal job of providing these opportunities to students um, and the students really, um, really took advantage of that. So, so huge kudos to the CCS team and to all the students who took advantage of that as well. Uh, and then, um, you know, as importantly, I think uh, during these past two years, our admissions teams have done a fantastic job as well in terms of uh, doing activities virtually, representing the school and all of its accomplishments, all of our students' accomplishments and faculty accomplishments in the best manner possible virtually. And uh, that has also resulted in, in a phenomenal growth in our number of applications. So if I, and, you know, I think we're, high, you know, there's going to be, I think, one student for every 10 or, you know, what is it? Not even 10, one student for every 20 applications that is actually going to get selected. So, so you know, we have uh, been able to increase our applications a lot. Uh, and so a huge congratulations and kudos to the, um, to the admissions team as well. So as, as uh, you can see across all, uh, you know, the aspects that we spoke about, uh, you know, it's been a wonderful uh, set of accomplishments that all of you all had. So I heartily applaud, um, you know, all of your contributions, all of your accomplishments, and uh, you know, very, very proud of the team and where we stand today. Um, I think if at the beginning of COVID, somebody had said that, oh, this is what's going to be at the end of it, I would happily take it. You know, so I think uh, I'm very, very uh, grateful and thankful for all of your efforts. I also want to take this opportunity to, um, you know, kind of highlight and touch upon our uh, culture, something that we have been very proud of uh, and we have nurtured very, very carefully and very diligently. Um, our team size has grown. There's a lot of new folks that have come on board um, and I'm sure you are being uh, exposed to these various aspects of our culture. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you're being coached by your peers, your superiors, uh, folks that you see around. Uh, culture is not something that is just, uh, you know, put on a chart on a wall. It's actually what's practiced on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And um, it's an extremely important part of who we are. And uh, a few of the aspects that we have always treasured are, um, you know, how we are a very, very transparent and open organization which means that you know, anything can be discussed with anyone at any time. Um, and all of these conversations will happen in an in a, uh, environment of mutual respect, right? which means that 
you know whatever is discussed if there are differences of opinion those are very welcome debates are very welcome but you know whatever differences are it's about the issue at hand and it's not a reflection on the people right so we have to separate out the people and the issues and um, so so that is the kind of environment we want so the the transparency and mutual respect is an extremely important part of our culture and so all of the new folks this is something you have to hold very dear if you have to belong in our uh, culture and if you want to thrive here you need to imbibe that and you need to really value that you know the other is a, a sense of ownership that's been a very very important part and that if we are where we are today it is because um, all the folks that are in the team uh, have had this tremendous sense of ownership and responsibility right it's um, you know people don't need to come and tell you that something good that you have to do is to be done you know if it is something good you will do it you should do it um, you know because you believe that it's the right thing to do and not because you know somebody told you to do it right so we all have to have that sense of ownership and you're empowered to do that i think that's one of the things that uh, you know as an organization we've done is to empower people to actually do what they're supposed to do and support them through that process you know which is why with a relatively small team you know we've come a long long way um, yeah and and then you know the other thing is is to basically be um, agile and nimble and have that startup mindset right so you know uh, generally the higher education space is uh, is pretty um, stagnant and you know driven by inertia in that kind of an environment being dynamic being agile being responsive to market requirements being responsive to uh, the changes that are happening in the world around us is actually a very powerful um, weapon and that's something that we've always had you know so we have been the first school to bring analytics into the mba curriculum you know we are the first school to bring uh, ai and, and machine learning and things like that and you know all things digital i think you know we we probably been the first school to be very very digitally focused and that has really helped us right and similarly as things change you know we should always be at the forefront of what the industry expects from uh, from graduates what the industry expects from academia uh, and the advantage that we have is the ability to be agile and nimble and and respond fast to changing requirements okay so so those are some of the aspects of our culture that uh, you know that uh, I, i want all of us to remember and to actively practice um you know so so if any one of you ever have any questions please speak to someone about it you know if you um you know what we don't want is um you know anything being uh, taken personally you know personal differences that don't get resolved you know um communication is the best way to get things sorted so just talk when there is a doubt talk and you know there is no problem that i have seen that having good communication doesn't solve i have so much evidence of this you know we so 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 i think those are the things that i would urge you to remember and um you know on this foundation day um so again i'm very very proud of what we have accomplished over the last couple of years and you know beyond, beyond that very happy with where we are right now um and we have a fantastic foundation laid for uh, the future that is to come in the next few years and beyond i think it's very very exciting where we are going um you know i i don't see anything that's going to stop us from being one of the top institutions in india very soon uh, and then you know one of the top institutions in asia and beyond uh, in the world itself right so i'm quite excited about the prospects that lay ahead of us so congratulations to you all and i wish you a fantastic function over the rest of the evening i'm sure that the students would put on a great show unfortunately i'll uh, i'll be missing that i've but i've seen it many times and each time has been better than the past right and i don't see a, a why it will be any different this year uh, this year either uh, and i also uh, look forward to um, and look forward to the remarks from our uh, uh, esteemed chief guest who i i guess is going to speak next so i don't want to hold you guys back from that thank you very much Thank you so much for your motivational words, sir. Uh, so we would now like to invite our esteemed chief guest for the event, Dr. Rajat Datta. Dr. Rajat Datta is currently country head of Devices and Services Partnership, Southeast Asia and India region, Google Singapore. 
he is an engineer by background he has a rich educational background which includes degrees from prestigious institutions like university of cambridge oxford university walton business school mit mdi and enpc paris apart from that he has been the recipient of multiple awards throughout his prof professional journey from multinational corporations like shell ibm and nokia etc now we would request our chief guest to address the gathering thank you uh, thank you for that uh, uh, raja I, i will just take a second before i hand over to you it's a great privilege for me to welcome raja also raja dr raja it's a dr raja has been my student and he's another faculty over here from the bappa vidya mukhopadhyay his students also is raja he, the way he has moved in his life is phenomenal and from day one i'm seeing him he's so academic in his very professional but he has kept which our chairman always tells read 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 and he has done that he is really a voracious reader he keeps learning and being a student of this profession with this thank you raja to join us uh, as a privilege for me as a as a proud proud moment for me and for mr bappa who has asked me to tell this words to you to hear from you thank you thank you sir uh, good evening everyone uh, so far it's been amazing like uh, it, it's always great to see an event like this you know happening in person like although many of us are have joined virtually but just seeing the podium and seeing people around it's 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 great i wish i was there uh, in in person and being able to witness some of this uh, but before i start uh, respected esteemed uh, professors the director of the institute the chairman of the institute whom we just heard some fantastic motivational words from and the other directors who run multiple functions in this university in this fantastic business school and uh, the great team who actually have created this 12 years i think i'm sure there's a fantastic team in great lakes who have actually made this happen uh, the alumni and most important in all such events the spotlight is always on the current batch of students so all the students of pgdm and the pgpm program Uh, and I, i was lucky to meet uh, about 100 of them through an elective over the last uh, couple of months so some of you i have actually interacted with but it's it's an absolute pleasure to actually come here today uh, in this ceremony because a foundation day is actually a great moment and as as i was listening to the chairman and the director talk to the journey i was amazed that it's been just about 12 years and in 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 that there were actually two or three years of pandemic like it was so difficult to communicate interact with people and so much has been achieved by by the great lakes gurgaon campus that's really inspiring and that's motivating to see that the number of journals that are getting published the fact that the school has already started two journals the placement records and there is a two year program and a one year program so there are actually two format of uh, post graduate programs that are running in the school so very motivating stuff so congratulations to all of you uh, specifically on this day i'm sure the leadership is reflecting and getting goosebumps of everything that they've achieved but probably getting even more inspired in terms of what the path ahead looks like uh, like mohan said that you know it can be one of the top schools in india and one of the top schools in asia pacific and beyond right but the key to all of that happening is uh, all of you who are sitting here the students right like the pgpm students and the pgp and pgdm students like all of you guys will actually make it happen uh, you have fantastic professors uh, great infrastructure amazing learning environment and some of the electives that are offered to you is really at the cutting edge uh, so as i stand here i'm actually super humbled I, i i don't think i actually deserve to stand here and you know to and and give a talk like this in, uh, in fact uh it it's super humbling that there are so many enriched professors who are doing some great research work but now that i am here and i'm getting a chance to talk i will i will as well you know grab that opportunity and talk for the next few minutes what i will do today is i will not talk a lot about the great learning experience that you will get in the school that you are getting and i can already see that you have the best of faculty the best of electives etc but over the last 20 years since i've started working there are about six things i felt that i felt are very important as we go through our journey uh during the school and after our school like as we get into our professional world as we get into life what are some of the things that 
generally works and works for our goodness if if we actually try to imbibe them and follow them in our day to day life in our day to day path in our professional journey etc and i said six things because typically in these kind of foundation days we all participate we all listen and then after a day after two days after three days we get busy with our classes and it forgets so at least the first takeaway is if you remember that this guy had come to talk and he talked for about 20 minutes at least one thing you remember is he said that there were six things that he he felt he learned beyond the school so the first one among the six is actually the importance of connections uh, relationships and experiences and it starts with this school with this one year or two year depending on the program you are in and trust me the importance of connections and experiences and relationships that you can build in the school while you are here will actually stay on with you for years for decades ahead and what i mean by that is i think uh, when the chairman was uh, referring to referring to the culture of the school right a lot actually gets created around there so what do you mean by connections uh, is it about the connections with your friends is it about the connections with your project team is it about the connections with one or two faculty it can be much beyond you can have connections with every single facet while you are staying in this school and i agree that it can be much deeper if all of you are in person in the campus but probably with time even that is going to happen because we are probably at the end of this pandemic the world is looking good things are looking brighter but as you build the connections try and see that is there a conversation i can have with my classmate beyond just the elective beyond just the case study beyond just the project can i have a conversation with my faculty beyond just the lecture that he did or beyond just the exam that i passed under him or beyond just the grading that he has done for my project etc because there are a lot of conversations to be had and these conversations are actually the starting point of moving from that connection to a relationship and the moment you move from a connection to a relationship the relationship gets deeper and from there you start getting experiences i'll give you a small example when i was in uh, when i was studying in uh, university of cambridge i there was a professor who was uh, also the director of the institute professor yoken and he was an economist he used to teach us economics and he used to do act like active research in black scholes model etc and then one day the first class he organized was in in the middle in, in an open podium in jesus college and there was no classroom it was open air class but when i went there i figured out that the place around is full of amazing architecture great sculpture like fantastic pieces of art because it was right in the middle of the jesus college it was an open air theater and personally i am a big fan of art so i was like less listening to his lecture and more listening to uh, like observing the art the pieces of art around right in the next class the professor you can uh, was doing on economics it was in a in an auditorium and it was a proper classroom like a proper business school classroom i was sitting in the second bench and all he did is he straight away came to me and in the in front of the entire class he asked me so what did you see that was the question that was exactly the question he asked me so what did you see and i was completely taken aback but i just remembered that in the previous class i was not paying much attention i was actually looking at the sculpture and the pieces of art around because i was just too attracted by everything and then he said can you meet me after the class and we i i met him after the class after his lecture got over and i figured out that he is also a huge art aficionado and he does a lot of painting collections he connected me to all the museums in the city of cambridge and around and over the next one year while we did the great courses etc I also got a chance to actually interact with the professor from a very different angle and till that we still interact and besides economics we also discuss a lot of art so basically what i want to establish with this with this example is when you are in a business school you are around great people your classmates each of them are very talented your professors are very talented the staff in the college who are actually running this organization is actually very talented they have all different skill sets so try and know them genuinely just beyond the transactional relationship that you have uh, you can you can actually figure out a much nicer way to create that culture that probably your chairman was uh, referring to and the second example i want to share like uh, professor sanyal who is my teacher was referring to professor bappa who is also my teacher 
some of these connections and relationships if you invest in them they last long so 2018 and i think we were celebrating the 15th uh, alumni celebrations uh, in mdi and all of and a big bunch of us in you know, about 40 of us reached in the campus and we we had all the event and everything and we actually got a figure out a way to get in touch with professor bappa and we actually made sure that he joins us in the celebration we said that you have to come down and you have to celebrate with us because these are 15 years so the depth of some of these relationships and connections if you stay on and if you really invest in them they stay on and pay back to you and you you get to learn multiple things beyond just the theoretical frameworks and the strategic frameworks and the and the ai and the ml models and the financial statements and the models etc cetera, etc cetera. so that's my first thing the second thing is if you can do that in this one or two years that you are in this campus having that sense of uh, you know genuinely building long term connections and relationships and experiences this will pay back in a very strong way for the rest of your career in the next 20 30 years in the space of networking now we all hear this second thing and that brings me to my second topic that networking is very important everybody says this networking is very important uh, connect with people in linkedin meet people talk to them in conferences etc etc but trust me networking as a term i think is used in a very diluted manner networking is not just about connecting with another professional talking about a project where you guys may have a mutual interest or finding for your future assignment or looking for a great job offer etc networking is much beyond and networking has a few layers i think the first layer of networking which there is a tendency of getting diluted in the digital era is the amount of time you can spend on your convergent network now what is convergent network convergent convergent network is actually your smallest network it is the network which is the most personal to you it is the network where you can come and share your happiness where you can come and share your sorrow if you feel sad you can get back to your convergent network if if you feel angry if you fail if you succeed if you feel that this is not the right job for you if you feel that you are low if you feel that you are ecstatic you can always come back and share it with your convergent network so who is your convergent network convergent network is something which is very personal convergent network can be your parents your relatives your school friends your college friends some colleagues who became very close to you during your work life two or three or four colleagues some of your classmates that you met in great lakes so convergent network is always tight is always small is is not hundreds of people it may be 15 people 20 people one of the things that are happening in the digital era wherein we are actually discussing theoretical frameworks like platform fx network fx two sided models one sided models on demand delivery platforms etc etc we we are thinking about connecting people to people we are talking about connecting people businesses to consumers etc etc but at the core what is happening is while all of this is happening in many cases our convergent networks are shrinking and convergent networks unfortunately cannot shrink so convergent network is always net positive convergent network should always grow so for example in 2015 if my convergent network is of 15 people in 2020 under no circumstances i need to like lose those 15 people i should always have those 15 people who are there in 2015 and probably in the last 7 years i will add a few more friends in my convergent network so convergent network is very tight but it will just not stay on with you without you investing in it so my my call to all of you is as you guys get busy as you graduate as you start working as you get busy with jobs as you move to different cities be mindful of the fact that am i giving the right time to my convergent network do i call this small group of 20 30 people do i stay in touch with them actively do i nourish them because if you nourish them only then it will stay intact and if it stay intact that's the place where you can go in your happy day in your sad day in your day when you are low in your day when you are high so that's the first important piece in your convergent network and in the in the theoretical framework of networking so it all starts at home and home is your convergent network the second thing is brokerage network brokerage network is basically the urge to meeting new people the urge to getting into conversations and trust me if you actually follow the behavior of creating great connections great relationships and great experiences during your time in great lakes you will already get groomed to actually figure out a way to do very well in your brokerage network what do i mean by brokerage network 
I'll say I'll, I'll share with you a personal example. I work in Google, which is a fairly large company today. It has 150,000 employees. I have a small goal that I try to follow, and I'm trying to follow it over the last eight, nine years. Every week, can I figure out a way to meet one new colleague who may be in my team, who may not be in my team? There are so many businesses in Google. There is cloud, there is ads, there is maps. So can I try and figure out a colleague in a different forum? Like maybe in the cafeteria, somebody is having a coffee. Can I strike a conversation and just have a chat? Like in which department do you work? What is your kind of work? So that is actually brokerage network. It needs, again, active involvement from all of you. When you get busy in a professional world, you tend to do your job. You tend to show your performance. You tend to get promoted. You tend to grow very fast. But some of these things that actually operate in a very subconscious way is a big factor in your next assignment, is a big factor in your continuous learning. So tomorrow, let's say you are doing a project which needs some input and you are in sales and it needs some input from somebody in the supply chain team. Imagine if you have a brokerage network wherein you have two or three connections who have some understanding of supply chain, you are already having an advantage of consulting that person. Or if you are in touch with your professor who had taught you supply chain in your school, you can actually call that professor. So some of these things should become a habit. It should not happen overnight. You know, suddenly that I need, I'll then call uh, somebody in the supply chain department and try and understand. Because I need something in supply chain input or something in analytics, so now I will call my professor who, used, who had taught me analytics. Some of these things cannot be abrupt. And brokerage network exactly says that it's a small incremental effort and it's again, not transactional. It's a genuine conversation that you can have over a coffee. It's a genuine conversation you can have with some colleague from a different department over lunch. And all of you I know will join large organizations. And sometimes you can also do this outside your organization. For example, meeting a partner, meeting a distributor, meeting a customer, and you can that way build your brokerage network. In one of my past assignments in Nokia, I was in a market visit in with the chairman of Nokia at that time. And he had said me one thing that, you know, how good you do in your brokerage network, you can understand by checking how many packs of business cards did you print in that specific year. And I think that was a fantastic wisdom that he had shared. We have gone to a different era now. It's a digital era. So we exchange emails, we exchange WhatsApp numbers. But what I'm trying to say is, imagine if you meet one people every week, you meet 52 people in a year. And in a 10 year time span, you can actually create a huge network and that through a six degrees of separation. So that's the second thing. And the third thing is if you are able to maintain a very good convener network and a very good brokerage network, trust me, 10 years from now, when you are mature middle managers working in large organizations, you will be actually an expansionist in a capacity. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that you will be an expansionist in a capacity? What I mean is, there will be so many people who will look up to you. There will be so many people who will want to reach out to you. It can be a student. It can be a mentee. It can be a professional who has just started his or her job in the company. And that actually makes you a responsible business professional. So a responsible business professional won't get created you know, by just you trying to showcase your work or creating a great delivery or getting multiple promotions or you know, trying to show how you are rising up the ladder or, or actually going to superior positions, et cetera, et cetera. At the core is connections, relationships, culture, experiences, and network. So, so please try and invest in your convener network and brokerage network. Convener network is actually, unfortunately, uh, a table step. There's, it's a non-negotiable. Like if because of our job pressure, if because of our aspiration, if because of our zeal to do well in our career, our convener network starts getting diluted in this digital era where it is so easy to maintain the connection, then our fundamental foundational principles are getting loose. So we cannot afford to loosen our convener network because that's, that's the bunch of people because of whom we are sitting here in this podium, in this gallery, in this auditorium today and able to enjoy this because a lot of those people's energy, motivation, enthusiasm, etc., have taken us over here. So that's my second call out. My third thing is, I'll again refer to a professor, Professor Stephen Scholz. He was teaching us mathematical and statistical modeling. So it was a very hectic uh, elective. Uh, 
very similar to the elective that even Professor Buffer ran us through during my time in MDI. Super tough, and, you know, like really, really like fighting hard to figuring out our grades, etc. And then I don't know why I again decided to take Professor Stephen Scholl's uh, mathematical modeling in Cambridge. And he did a he did a lot of difficult sessions, a lot of Excel modeling, etc. And in the last class, he stunned us. He said that today's session will be on luck. And uh, believe me, we will not need any mathematical modeling. What we will discuss is the importance and the impact of luck. And that lecture stayed on with me. And it was so deep what he discussed. And as I was listening to uh, the director, Professor Sanyal, as, as Sir was mentioning, 9,000 applications, high cutoffs, et cetera, et cetera. One element that is so true is all of us are sitting here because yes, we did something well. We probably wrote our GMAT well, we probably wrote our CAT well, we probably studied well. But trust me, one thing that worked in all our favor is luck. And, and because luck worked in our favor, we are sitting here in a country which has a billion people. We are actually having the privilege of sitting in a fantastic large green campus in Gurgaon and getting a chance to learn from multiple different facets, right? So, so we are lucky, we are super lucky. Now, when you are lucky, you have a lot of responsibilities that comes with luck. Because if you are lucky, that means, besides your effort, you are lucky. I'm not saying that you are pure, pure lucky. You have obviously put a lot of efforts and that's, uh, that's also the reason you are here. But you are also lucky because of, uh, because of the fact that you are amongst uh, millions of student applications who are probably sitting over here. So with luck, it comes a lot of responsibility. And the responsibility cannot be self-centered and uh, like unfortunately in today's business world responsibilities are also shared like everything is digital responsibility is also getting a lot of opportunity to get egalitarian in nature and hence as future leaders i think since you have given your effort and since you have got the luck you need to be mindful of fundamentally three things and all of us say that, you know, I'm doing my MBA, I want to get a great job and tomorrow I want to become a great leader. But I think that there is this thing called means creates end. And the end is probably leadership. So I cannot just think that I will become a great leader and I'll become a great leader because that's the end. What is the means that can actually make me a great leader? And I fundamentally think there are three foundational things that you as students of the future should think and uh, interpret in your own way, each of you actually in your own way, and figure out that the fact that you are lucky, what are the three things that you can establish in yourself to create the fact that you can actually become the future leader? So the first one in that is, what is your definition of ethics and governance? You know, we study a lot of subjects in a business school. But one thing that is core is tomorrow when you are becoming responsible to run a business, when you are joining a company, when you are actually leading your life, when you are responsible for people around you, within the company or outside the company, what is your definition of ethics and corporate governance? And personally, I think that's one of the most crucial subjects that we should deep dive into as students, as groups, as we are going through our journey and trying to become a business leader. So that's number one. Number two is, what is that goal of the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goal? There are 17 Sustainable Development Goals. So you can be inspired by all 17 Sustainable Development Goals, but you can be inspired by two or five or seven, but which is those four or five goals which actually gives you the goosebump to become that future leader? Which is that goal? Is it gender diversity, eradicating gender diversity? Yeah, like like you, there's so much amount of uh, there, there's so much amount of lack of diversity like can you figure out a way to see that diversity can be embraced in all forms and shape second is is it climate change is it eradicating hunger is it embracing education and you know really taking education to the next step is it running an organization which is full of innovative partnerships so i don't want to go through the 17 sustainable development goals but the core ethos behind your taking that role of a future leadership pit stop is which of the six or seven sustainable development goals that gives you that goosebump that I want to create this impact for the future. So that's the second thing. The first one I said, what is your model? What is your role model of ethics and corporate governance? The second is which one, which one are those 
sustainable development goals that really gives you a goosebump and you want to create an impact. And the third thing is specifically, can you take a motto that when you become more responsible in, e in each and every step in your corporate journey or in each and every step of your journey as an entrepreneur or a future academician, et cetera, et cetera, that you will stand up to create a world which is truly DEI centric, diversity, equity, and inclusion centric. And the thing is, because you all of you are lucky that you are getting this opportunity to become a future leader. So can you really become a future leader through imbibing the DEI principles to making sure that you actually stand up for sustainable development goals and you become an ethical future manager who truly understand every facets of corporate governance. So that's the third thing I want to leave, with, leave you with. The fourth thing is uh, learning versus redundancy. And we touched upon this in the in the classes that we were doing in, in, in so, so some of you would have heard about this already. But you know, that's like two sides of a coin. Like, does your education end with this fantastic PGPM program now that you have graduated from this great school and you have a fantastic job? Does it end over here? Trust me, it doesn't work like that in the digital era today. The subjects are changing. Like today, there is AI and ML in the MBA curriculum. There are electives around Python. There are electives around digital enterprise strategy. There are electives around programmatic advertising. Like 15 years back when I was doing my MBA, there was elective around only advertising. And there was one book called Advertising Management. And now there is Advertising Management. Then there is Digital Advertising Management. Then there is Social and Influential Advertising Management. And now they are even talking about Programmatic Advertising Management. So imagine the layers, right? So subjects are changing. Electives are changing. So first of all, I don't think we can afford to feel great that, you know, I have, I have graduated from a great business school. Let me just do my job and enjoy life, etc. I don't think the world is framed like that today. Uh, it, it was never framed like that. But digital is like telling that to our eyes and ears that, you know, please continue learning. So that's one thing. And the other side of the coin is what if I don't continue learning? What if I don't read? What if I don't listen to a podcast? What if I don't follow some articles? What if I don't see a blog? You know, what happens? I think the answer is very objective. It's redundancy. Uh, if we don't continue to learn, we'll become redundant. And, uh, and I think none of us want to be redundant because everyone in this room is super sharp and everyone can work another 30, 40 years. So, and we want to we want to contribute. We can contribute. So to do that, I think follow the principles of continuous learning, and don't pause. So my 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 request to all of you is great exposure, great college, great graduation, great placements, but don't pause. Please don't pause. There is, there are ways. Uh, figure out what is your X hours of me investment per day or per week. Is it one hour per day? Is it two hours per day? Depending on your other responsibilities in life, but you need an X hour of investment uh, per day, per week, etc. And trust me, this is not uh, this is not very transactional. There can be many aspects that you can learn. Like you can you can learn other things. Like you can learn culture, you can learn painting, you can learn sculpture. Things that keeps you that right balance of left brain, right brain. Things that things that don't push you just to power struggle. Things that just don't push you to ego. You know, things that actually make you a true individual who in turn will actually help you to think about sustainable development goals, DEI, et cetera, et cetera. So that's my fourth thing that I wanted to share with you. The fifth thing is the return on investment of on listening. Uh, we all want to talk. We all want to contribute. We all want, there, there's a term that is used a lot in the corporate world. It says executive presence. Uh, you need to show presence. And, and we think that presence is by sharing our point of view, by talking, by, uh, you know, debating, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, anat anatomically, the creator of the world kind of gave us two ears and a mouth to speak, right? So even that is lopsided to a 67%, 37%, 33% kind of a ratio if I, if I take all three as 33%. So, you know, there is a humongous power of uh, return on investment that you will get if you truly value listening in every sphere. Uh, and I will not call out anyone over here, but I will give you a small example. Uh, and this is right in the class, right in, uh, in uh, like right in the Great Lakes uh, 
small cohesive group. We were, we were studying digital enterprise strategy. And in one of the classes, we discussed a concept called competitive value trend. I don't, I don't need to get into the theory. This, this evening is all about fun, so let's not get into the details. But when we are discussing this, we kind of categorically called out that I am not discussing competitive value chain. So it's not competitive value chain, we are discussing competitive value train. And we uh, discussed that over the next six, seven, eight classes. We always rem reminded people you know, that we discuss competitive value train and not competitive value chain. And then we created our assignments. Uh, Assignments came in, fantastic assignments, great thoughts, like a lot of people did great work. But about half of the class wrote uh, their assignment on value chain and not competitive value chain. So that's what I'm trying to say that, you know, the power of listening is immense because everybody is intelligent, everybody is sharp, everybody has very solid IQ. Otherwise, you would not be reaching where you have reached today. But the power of listening will actually take you in multiple steps in different forums, meetings, et cetera. So please value listening. You're listening to your team members, listening to your manager, listening to your mentors. In your quiet period, actually listening to yourself. Like, what is your brain trying to tell you? What is the analysis trying to tell you? So please listen. Uh, so listen to everyone, not just the faculty members, not just the directors of the institute, but listen to everyone around you. And the last thing I want to leave you guys with is, in the first half of the career, in your first half of your career, let's say the first 10 to 15 years, try to have a mentor, get mentored by somebody, figure out your mentor, like as you get into your organization, um, you, your mentor can be anyone, your mentor can be your friend, your mentor can be a professor from the school, you, your mentor can be somebody whom you will meet in the future company, but try to have a mentor with whom you can actually keep on consulting your journey. And in the spirit of giving back in the first half of your career, try to mentor someone as well. Like there are many occasions and opportunities to mentor someone. You can mentor some future student in the school. You can mentor some newer colleague in your organization, etc. So that's the first half. And the second half of your career, try to have a coach who will always guide you, who will coach you. There's a difference between mentor and coach. So try in the second half of your career, always try to have a coach. Get coached by someone. And again, figure out who will be your coach, who can invest in you. And again, in the second half of your career, try to coach someone in the spirit of giving back. So basically get mentored or have a mentor, get a coach and otherwise coach someone. So do these things. So I basically very briefly talked about six things, the importance of connections, relationships and experiences, the value of network, more specifically the convenient network and then the brokerage network, uh, the return on investment on listening. Uh, if you don't learn, you will become redundant. Luck is very important. All of you are lucky, but with luck comes what will you do and leave behind for this world in terms of ethics, corporate governance, sustainable development goals, and hence your view on leadership and DEI. And finally, uh, as you start your journey, don't forget to have a mentor and don't forget to mentor someone. And in the later half, don't forget to have a coach and don't yourself forget to coach someone. I wish all of you uh, lots of good luck and i think the time ahead is so inspiring and so amazing because the world is fantastic there's so much happening in india and there's so much happening in the rest of the world so lots of good luck and and thank you again for having me here because i'm truly humbled to be able to speak to all of you guys uh, thank you to everyone uh, thank you so much sir for your words of wisdom now we move on to employee awards. Employees are the backbone upon which any strong organization builds, develops, and then grows on to become great. And our institution believes in living by these words. We dedicate today to empower, encourage the people who are core to this organization. We now move on to our first category of employee awards, which is for 10 year completion. Completing 10 years is really a big milestone and uh, contributing 10 years of their life for the growth and development of the institute is very, very appreciable. We would now request Dr. Sanyal to come on the stage and give away the awards. And also we would request faculty and staff to come on the stage as in when we announce the names. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's a great honor, I can tell you. Uh, congratulating someone and appreciating their 10 years service into this organization. I was not there when this started, but the gentleman who was there for the right from the beginning, 
Brick by brick, I request him to join me. Gautam, please could you join me? Today, all my students are here. Raja was my student, Gautam was also my student. <laughs> so, please uh, join me and, uh, and sharing this uh, uh, award with the people who have got it. The first one, please. Give me the name. Professor Purnima Gupta. Next is Professor SKL Panahal. <laughs> Professor Palhan was also our founding director. The order director, huh? right? right. So, and he has been such an amazing pillar of support and uh, as ever graceful. And I don't think he has aged in the last 10 years. <laughs> I just remember him exactly the way I first met him. And uh, I think uh, he's an inspiration to everyone uh, for everything that he has done, not just for Great Lakes, but all the things that he does for the society. Right? Even at this age, he said he went to Dehradun recently and uh, he has been helping students uh, in some of the remote areas learn and contributed. Uh, through his NGO and um, you know contributing to you know computer systems and teaching and so on, um, so it's amazing to have you here for throughout this journey. And I think you know some of the things that uh, Mohan sp spoke about in terms of culture and all. And I think it's uh, Professor Palhan and uh, all the others who embody these values who allowed that culture to be built. Thank you, Professor Palhan. Uh, next is Mr. Neeraj Avasti. Next is Mr. Kaluram Dixit. Next is uh, Mr. Subhash Chand.
Uh, now we move on to uh, second. Since uh, Dr. Sanil asked me to be here, since I've been there from the beginning, so many of them, you know, I've been, uh, I mean, I was privileged to know all of them for the last 10 years. And uh, I, think, I think if we, uh, if I go back and, and look back, uh, and this is completely impromptu, I, I didn't know that I was speaking, so. But um, I think all of them have played such a key role across all these 10 years, I, you know, Professor Purnima was always there whenever there was something to be done, uh, any event and all, so, you know, and I think all the directors, we had like uh, three different directors, Professor Palhan, uh, Dr. Himadri Das, uh, and now Dr. Sanya, I know that everybody would just depend on her um, for all the, all the events, um, right, our graduation ceremonies, um, um, right, and, and not just that, but all kinds of uh, institutional efforts. Right, things that go beyond the regular activities. So, uh, thank you, Professor Purnima, uh, for always being there. And um, um, you know, um, but, uh, um, obviously, I spoke about uh, Professor Palhan. Um, he's an inspiration, and even uh, Neeraj, I call him like uh, the everywhere person. Right, he's always there, ev everywhere. Right, not just in Great Lakes. I know that he's there in everything in uh, Great Learning as well. Um, right, helping uh, set up uh, things initially, all the support systems. Right, so in in fact, we have been like uh, debating, like you know, when can he, free, when can we free him from some of these things? Because the number of things he handles, uh, you know, it's it's a little concerning. <laughs> right, that um, you know. Too many things depend on him, so I've been telling him like you know you let go some of these things, but he's like no I'm I'm happy to do everything right. He's always just ready to take up you know whatever is there uh, without ever complaining. I know that when this uh, campus got, I think he had maybe two three days to get the entire internet uh, set up, right? The building construction was barely done, hostels were barely done, students were in the uh, I think uh, park in for a few days. Right, but he still took care of you know the entire wiring and like setting up the network and getting it everything ready. Right, uh, so um, uh, congratulations to Neeraj and uh, thanks for all his uh, contributions. Um, again, Dikshit has been there. I think uh, familiar face, always there to welcome uh, whenever anybody would come uh, to our older offices. Now we have a nice fancy campus, uh, but then it was like a very uh, tiny building and. Um, yeah, he used to be there uh, running across floors, uh, making sure that everybody uh, got whatever they wanted on time, uh, as they wanted. You know, some of our faculty and uh, directors, all of them have their own preferences, <laughs> right? Um, and he would take care of uh, all of them, right? Um, uh, without fail. Thank you, Dikshit. And, uh, And last, uh, last uh, Subhash, Subhash, uh, many of you may not know, is uh, been Mohan's driver. And yeah, you know, he would be having a brutal schedule. Mohan, uh, if you guys don't know, had always had a very brutal schedule. And so Subhash obviously had to match that, um, right? Be there whenever required, morning, night, uh, midnight, whatever be the time, again, uh, without ever complaining. And, uh, and I think um, that that itself was a great support and, and somebody you could rely on completely, um, right? In fact, everyone here, I think one of the reasons we could do very well as an organization is that uh, we could absolutely trust everyone, um, right? We know that, um, you know, people are there who take care of things, uh, right? And in the best possible way um, and to the maximum uh, level of capability that they have. So I think I think that's, that's something uh, we are very, very fortunate. It's very, very rare for organizations to have, um, you know, uh, people uh, be there for that long, uh, right? Um, I'm sure uh, many of you get into organizations where uh, you start thinking about, uh, you know, getting out in the by the second year post MBA. Uh, I'm looking at the current students. Um, I know my classmates did that, and I know that happens across uh, business schools. But here we have been very, very fortunate that uh, as a young, uh, you know, organization, we had, um, um, you know, staff staying for a 
you know, very long uh, tenure, and I'm sure there are some who uh, did not uh, uh, find this suitable, but many did, and because of that, we are uh, able to build up capacity and capability, right? Because you learn every single year, and the more you learn, the more uh, uh, capable you get. And as an organization, uh, that's how we got to become very capable, and, and the where we are today. So thank you all. Thank you. Uh, now we move on to next set of awards, which is for five-year completion. Uh, first is Mr. Pinto Kumar. Next is Mr. Mahavir Singh. Next is Dr. Jones Matthew. Mr. Ravinder Kumar. Next is Mr. Rampal. Next is Team Sudakso. Sudakso. Now we have few special categories for best performances during the year. We would request Dr. Sanyal to break the suspense and give, the, give away the awards. Yeah. Oh. Too many awards. Is it? So one new award is there also. So let me start for the best performer of the year 21-22. So there are a lot of people, uh, they perform. Uh, there were cases where, because of COVID, many could have been even better because at home they could not do many things. But I'm taking into consideration everything we thought. The gentleman who stood behind the students in odd hours in the night, in the morning, I remember in 2020, uh, when it was declared, uh, Professor Bappa and I was here till night 12 o'clock. 
to say the institute will close within two days or three days. The gentleman who's too strong and said, not to worry, sir, I'll manage everything. And thereafter, every time he opened and closed, opened and closed, the gentleman was Kishore. So Kishore, uh, uh, we would like to acknowledge you. And, uh, and uh, I, I, it's really, uh, I feel so happy. No, 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 standing over here. Before I go to spirit, spirit of the Great Lakes Award, we have a special category award instituted this year in line with AICTE's directive, and that is known as Women of Achievement Award. Any guesses? From, not for students, one will come during the, during the convocation, <laughs> but it's for the faculty and staff. And we there are so many, so many people. But we thought that lady who really contributed two years in this odd time, it was Professor Dr. Kirti. So she is the Woman of the Achievement Award 2021-22. It will go on for here on the first one you are the recipient of that. And last but not the least, this was a tough decision for the team, the committee who was discussing. Uh, because of COVID, you know, we individual performing in every space. This spirit of the world uh, is not for only teaching or only doing some type of activity. It's overall. Uh, we discussed a lot. Uh, like last year, we couldn't find any individual to be awarded this prize. There were three teams actually contesting neck to neck. One was the accreditation team. A big round of applause to the accreditation team. They did a really good job. A really good job. The other team was the admission team. They stood tall across uh, two years, actually. And 2020 was the year that really, really, really was tough year. Uh, uh, counseling, coaching, mentoring, uh, answering uh, questions. Uh, one, one student uh, had come five or six times to get them questions, queries, what will happen, et cetera, et cetera. They did a marvelous job. And the third team who was contesting also was none other than the CCS team. Huh? The, all the three teams, we didn't know what to do. Toss it, what it, and it boils down uh, what to do. So we thought that for the last two years, not just one year, we took a two years, 2020, 2021, and 2022, we thought they really, really worked hard. All of them worked hard. Uh, we thought that we'll honor this year the spirit of Great Takes Award and we'll bestow it on the admission team. <laughs> admission. You yeah, really, all three teams were doing well, but 2020 and 2021, and this year is good, good for you. This year is good for you. <laughs> Yeah. 
I think uh, uh, we'll take it in a minute. So, um, so again, uh, one of the things I learned in the last year or two is to acknowledge whenever you can. And um, I think in the last two years, um, this has been a really tough job in admissions, right? Um, because of the amount of uncertainty, both because of the pandemic as well as uncertainty induced by our regulators, AICT, which keeps shifting dates at the last minute, right? And the face of the organization for all the students, and let's say our customers, has been the admissions team, right? And I know the team handles uh, calls, messages at even midnight. Some of you may have done that, uh, pinging, you know, late evenings and so on, right? And it obviously takes a lot of energy and time. And I know that it's almost been a non-stop two years, right? Because of the delay in cycles, it's an extended instead of hand-holding for four months, now suddenly they're hand-holding for seven months while the next set of admissions for executive programs would start. So there was, it's just been relentless, right? Um, non-stop and, you know, and they've been involved in all the other activities, not just admissions, but uh, marketing and all the other support activities, just, um, you know, all the events, right? Uh, for example, this, um, you know, uh, banners and hoardings and, um, you know, all the collaterals, right? Every single thing, even, you know, getting the videographer arranged to, uh, you know, taking some great videos of faculty, showcasing our faculty in the uh, videos that we have done this year, as far as, as well as showcasing some of the students, um, right? Uh, um, across, you know, YouTube and so on, right? I think the team has uh, really, like, push themselves over the last two years and, uh, you know, obviously as as part of the team as well as uh, as part of the board, I'd like to really thank the team for everything they have done in the last couple of years and for the many years before that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple of more uh, in uh, five-year category, Mr. Sanjay. Mr. Mohit. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we would now request uh, Professor Ahindra for a vote of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Raja, for staying back and uh, uh, stay back for a few more minutes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and let me tell you, the gentleman who is going to give the vote of thanks, Dr. Ahindra, he was also in MDI for a long, long time. So here is another MDI. He didn't teach you. Yeah, I, I, I left in 1996. Okay, uh, when I received the call of uh, offering vote of thanks, I thought it's a privilege for me to talk to people and acknowledge my understanding about this running of the place and my attendance on ninth Foundation Day. This is the ninth Foundation Day. And uh, I think it's honor. So first I thank uh, Dr. Raja Dutt, who is uh, from the same institute where I have spent my two decades of life, and the way he talked about network, relationship, network, listening, these are all actually uh, not a textbookish thing. This is what our great Professor Bala used to also say, network is the net worth. So it was a really good speech which shows the ability to connect people connect with the industry, connect with the colleague, and deliver results. If you have uh, seen the uh, CV circulated of Dr. Dutta, it is a really matter of envy. Best of the institutions of the world, he has studied, and he has acquired degrees, 
certificates, diplomas, and uh, you know the uh, recommendations, achievements, awards, and he still remembers his professors. You have just heard Professor Bappa's class and Dr. Sundar's class. <laughs> okay. So, uh, great thanks to you uh, on behalf of all of us, myself and all my faculty colleagues. Uh, I would uh, gratefully acknowledge your contribution. Let me submit an event like this cannot happen overnight. The wheel started rolling a month back. It required planning and bird's eye for all the details. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very inspired, motivated, and dedicated colleagues at the Institute who know their job and who are result-oriented. And incidentally, uh, Dr. Singh is now living, sits in next to my left side, and on my right side, Dr. Sanal sits. So I am in the sandwich between two powerful people. One is one of the senior most professor of the largest program, another is the director. But I am the privilege also to see the planning, the discussions, the nitty gritties. So I will touch upon this. So now I take the uh, privilege to offer thanks to our chairman, Sri Mohan Lakam Raju. Now uh, I am seeing him for the last 10 years. And he, I see his untiring effort to carve out a distinct position in the arena of higher education in India. He is unleashing his masterful mind within and has remained vanguard of those who are exploring the extended limits of human will power. His strategy to create institutions of higher education with a focus for creating problem solving so that learners' mind remained agile and adaptive. And the country also recognizes that. Mr. Mohan Lakam Raju gets award and recognition in this country in the national forum. I would offer my very sincere thanks to our young board member and director marketing, Sri Gautam Lakham Raju. Despite there is a, a very important function in the home, which he has completed and taken the flight to be here, to attend this function, shows the commitment. Now, uh, I have a very interesting observation. Sri uh, Gautam Lakham Raju, really understand the pulse of the students and parents in this country, those who are pursuing or aspiring to study higher education. You see, the last two years, he was also saying that last two years was really a tough time. Many institutions got closed. Many students did not join education. Many uh, institutions, faculties did not get the salaries. But uh, Mr. Gautam Lakham Raju with his team has given us the best of the talents in the class, best of the quality, quality and the quality. And this is how the wheel is getting run. And we, what we see today, please appreciate, when students are satisfied in your teaching, then only you get a rating of 4.5. If the student would not have been that quality, we would not have got the rating. So look at the quality and the screening of the students. The whole admission team is sitting here. Admission and branding and hats off. Done excellent job. Now, uh, our director, a very colleague savvy person, a strong academic bent of mind, always thinks about doing something brick by brick in this, taking the institute to a greater height academically. We have seen in the afternoon, the research work done by the professors, uh, faculty members and others, and that has been recognized. And uh, it was uh, unprecedented. I have never seen that. And as a director of business school, I have never done that. So it was really a remarkable thing in my life. And I think it's, it, will, it will have a huge impact on the minds of my other colleagues. So uh, Dr. Sandal has a great eye on the detail of this function. And he looks into every aspect of it 
does not manage microman does not do the micromanagement but he gives a very you know conducive support to others to deliver the results that we have seen in the uh, accreditation team while he sits there accreditation bosses do the work and we get the result now uh, here i will say that uh, the whole function which you see uh, dr datta is speaking from that place our chairman is talking from hyderabad we are all enjoying in a comfortable place good sound good audio quality video quality and of course neeraj has just now got the award but the handy work of the whole it team is fantastic and as mr gautam lakhon raju said that neeraj also manages partly in great learning uh, i remember i was teaching in bangalore and gave a phone call to neeraj that i am finding difficulty in teaching inside the class because the projection and the communication part immediately people swung into action within 15 minutes things have been addressed in bangalore inside the classroom this is what is the quality at great lakes we have with the colleagues with whom we work now the whole administration under the leadership of mr boral and lieutenant colonel jayarani is fantastic you know every uh, everything happens we do not see them they are asserting or they are talking something but things are happening a very seamless way all of the faculty members all come from gurgaon or from delhi to this place so those who come from delhi is different but from gurgaon from home to campus it is the administration and mr hitesh arranges everybody's everybody's travel so the whole administration gets credit for that this smooth smooth driving and taking us here and we never miss class even at 8:30 even in winter so this is what is the arrangement of the system now uh, when this happens now comes a very critical aspect now we have talked about the admission team admission and branding bosses but how does it work unless we have a 24 by 7 by 365 a team known as ccs led by madam sailaja there is a expectation straight mill there is a expectation straight mill it is not only the students it is the competitors it is the parents everybody looks at what is happening at great lakes who is coming when and i remember this year 26 or 27 delight was coming and sailaja was you know anxious sailaja ira and the whole team that the class has to be done in the night i was taking class in the night why because if the placement goes well the market gets the signal we get the good students we are in a position to filter students otherwise will be at the mercy of the general students so the whole cycle has to be understood and thanks goes to the placement team and uh, while selaja is doing this great job you cannot get students unless shankar ajay and the team gives you the students round the year grading results out within 15 days dr sanal has ensured it that within 15 days you have to do by any means so foundation day is a one day but the way whole year things move we must appreciate you must understand and i see it from the room generally i come very less out of the room but i see what is all happening that's i thought it is important and opportunity for me to talk about so admission team placement team and the program controller fantastic job and we have to talk about uh, sodexo everything we get at our platter right from breakfast to lunch evening bonders and coffees and uh, this is a really great experience to be here and i thought i must submit to all of you that this was uh, my vote of thanks and my style of talking no the last <laughs> faculty is the last because faculty drives the system so thereby this year we have got a few interesting things 
we have got colleagues who is ranked in the world journals where the professors of MIT and Stanford etc is given and we have our great professor mukhopadhyay's name is there it is a matter of pride and the last word for faculty my heartiest congratulations congratulations to all my esteemed academic colleagues who by their teaching training coaching mentoring guiding in the class preparing students for industry deserves a commendable mention and gratefulness my salute to all of you and certainly i feel very proud working with all of you here with this i conclude namaste Thank you so much, Raja sir, for being with us here today. Thank you so much for your motivational words. We request everyone to gather in the amphitheater. Uh, in for the cake cutting and uh, culture program. Thank you. Thank you.
So guys, uh, we'll have uh, our culture program, starting with uh, Mudit from PGDM. He'll present a poem on Mahabharat, and uh, I think he'll connect virtually. Namaskar. Mahabharat mein ek prasang aisa bhi hai, jab Shri Krishna Duryodhan ke samaksh Maitri ka prastav le kar jate hain, aur Pandavo ko paanch gaon dene ke liye kehte hain. Kintu, दुर्योधन उसे अस्वीकार कर देता है और श्री कृष्ण को कैद करने का आदेश देता है इसका वर्णन रामधारी सिंह दिनकर जी ने अपने काव्य रश्मि रथी के तृतीय सर्ग में कृष्ण की चेतावनी के रूप में इस प्रकार किया है वर्षों तक वन में घूम घूम बाधा विघ्नों को चूम चूम सह धूप धाम पानी पत्थर पांडव आए कुछ और निखर सौभाग्य न सब दिन सोता है देखें आगे क्या होता है मैत्री की राह बताने को सबको सुमार्ग पर लाने को दुर्योधन को समझाने को भीषण विध्वंस बचाने को भगवान हस्तिनापुर आए पांडव का संदेशा लाए दो न्याय अगर तो आधा दो पर उसमें भी यदि बाधा हो तो दे दो केवल पांच ग्राम रखो अपनी धरती तमाम हम वही खुशी से खाएंगे परिजन पर असी न उठाएंगे दुर्योधन वह भी दे न सका दुर्योधन वह भी दे न सका आशीष समाज की ले न सका उल्टे हरि को बांधने चला जो था साधि साधने चला जब नाश मनुष्य पर छाता है पहले विवेक मर जाता है हरि ने भीषण हुंकार किया अपना स्वरूप विस्तार किया डगमग डगमग दिग्गज डोले भगवान कुपित होकर बोले जंजीर बढ़ाकर साध मुझे हा हा दुर्योधन बांध मुझे हा हा दुर्योधन बांध मुझे यह देख पवन मुझ में लय है यह देख गगन मुझ में लय है मुझ में विलीन झंकार सकल मुझ में लय है संसार सकल अमृत फूलता है मुझ में संहार झूलता है मुझ में उदयाचल मेरा दीप्त भाल भूमंडल वक्ष स्थल विशाल भुज पर निबंध को घेरे हैं मे नाकु मेरु पग मेरे हैं दिप्ते जो ग्रह नक्षत्र निकर सब है मेरे मुख के अंदर शत कोटि विष्णु ब्रह्मा महेश शत कोटि जिष्णु जल पति धनेश शत कोटि रुद्र शत कोटि काल शत कोटि दंड धर लोकपाल जंजीर बढ़ाकर साथ इने हा हा दुर्योधन बात इने हा हा दुर्योधन बात इने भूलोक अतल पाताल देख गत और अनागत काल देख यह देख जगत का आदि सृजन यह देख महाभारत का रण मृतकों से पटी हुई भू है पहचान इसमें कहा तू है अंबर में कुंतल जाल देख पद के नीचे पाताल देख मुट्ठी में तीनों काल देख मेरा स्वरूप विकराल देख सब जन्म मुझी से पाते हैं फिर लौट मुझी में आते हैं बांधने मुझे तो आया है जंजीर बड़ी क्या लाया है यदि मुझे बांधना चाहे मन तो पहले बांध अनंत गगन सूने को साध न सकता है वह मुझे बांध कब सकता है हित वचन नहीं तूने माना मैत्री का मूल्य न पहचाना तो ले मैं भी अब जाता हूं अंतिम संकल्प सुनाता हूं याचना नहीं अब रण होगा जीवन भैया की मरण होगा टकराएंगे नक्षत्र निकर बरसेगी भू पर वहीं प्रकार फण शेष नाग का डोलेगा विकराल काल मुंह खोलेगा दुर्योधन रण ऐसा होगा फिर कभी नहीं जैसा होगा भाई पर भाई टूटेंगे वायश्रिगाल सुख लूटेंगे सौभाग्य मनुष्य के फूटेंगे आखिर तू भूषा ही होगा हिंसा का पर्दा ही होगा थी सभा सन्न सब लोग डरे थी सभा सन्न सब लोग डरे चुप थे या थे बेहोश पड़े केवल दो नर न अघाते थे धृत राष्ट्र विदुर सुख पाते थे कर जोड़ खड़े प्रमुदित निर्भय दोनों पुकारते थे जय 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 वॉट अ वंडरफुल परफॉर्मेंस इट वॉज फ्रॉम मुदित सो नेक्स्ट इज गौतम कृष्णन फ्रॉम पी जी पी एम हुज गोइंग टू परफॉर्म अ मेलेडियस सॉन्ग गोइंग टू सिंग अ मेलेडियस सॉन्ग हो दूर से टूटी पतंजे से 
थी ये जिंदगानी मेरी आज हो कल हो मेरा ना हो हर दिन भी कहानी मेरी एक बंधन नया पीछे से अब मुझको बुलाए आने वाले कल की क्यों फिकर मुझको सता जाए एक ऐसी चुपन इस लम है मैं ये लम कहा था मेरा अब है सामने इस झूलो सरा मर जाओ या जीरो सरा खुशिया जो मनो यारूसरा मर जाओ या जीरो सना हो अभी मुझ में कभी भाके थोड़ी सुंदगी झाकी धड़कन नहीं जाना जिंदा हूँ मैं तो अभी कुछ ऐसी लगन इस लम है मैं ये लम कहा था मेरा अब है सामने इसे झूलो सना मर जाओ या जीरो सना खुशिया झूम लो या रो लो सना मर जाओ या जीरो सना What a great performance that was! Next up, we have Megha Maurya from PGDM One with a dance performance. तेरी 
पतंग जुड़ी जुड़ी जाए उड़ी उड़ी जाए उड़ी उड़ी जाए दिल की पतंग देखो उड़ी उड़ी जाए वन अ ग्रेटफुल परफॉर्मेंस बाय मेघा नेक्स्ट अप वी हैव the first offline performance of the evening it's a group performance by pgdm 1 and 2 so please welcome on stage mahima harshi anshul nishkarsh and amritanshu <laughs> बड़ी मुश्किल बाबा बड़ी मुश्किल गोरे गोरे गल पे काला काला पी what an energetic performance it was it made us dance in our seats 
So uh, now we have a student's award. First award is for Karma Yoga project. Great Lakes believes in inspiring leadership. And Karma Yoga, which is a mandatory course in both the programs of PGDM and PGPM, clearly is a hands-on in transforming potential into real work. We call upon stage Professor Palhan to facilitate the awards. So, uh, first award for Pallavi Gaur from PGDM. Can we have a round of applause? Second prize goes to Aniket Jada from PGPM. He is quarantined uh, right now, so his friend uh, Sumit will collect on his behalf. Can we have a round of applause for Aniket? Yeah, you got that yummy, yummy. Sorry, uh, so we have runners up, uh, Anagha from PGDM and Gagan Mathur from PGPM. Can we have a round of applause? I'm very happy to, know, to share with you <coughs> the work done by the students of uh, BGPM as well as PGDM in Karam Yoga was really fantastic. <coughs> we were quite hesitant at the beginning. Will we be able to do it in the quarantine, in the COVID time? I think uh, I'm thankful to the director who agreed to it that we can organize. And students really came up with the full potential and good energy. And they did a fantastic job. And I can assure you, the number of awards were limited. And in my opinion, the awards should have gone to at least about 30 people, 30 minimum. And uh, outstanding work was done by them. And I'm really very happy that Karma Yoga has been. And the truth is, <coughs> they delivered good results in diversified areas. And they also enjoyed and learned the process. I'm very happy. Thank you very much to the Shivaliers as well as the PGM group. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, we now have cultural performance. Uh, we have a dance performance from Juhi, who will presenting a semi-classical, uh, beautiful piece on love of La Krishna and Radha. Thank you. में 
चांद अकेला ठहरा था रात की जवानी पे चांदनी का पहरा था जुगनू की बारा सबके होठों पे ठहरी थी आके कोई बात ढोल मंजीरे बजने लगे बड़ी डफली पर था और झुमक झुमक कर नाच रही थी मेरी राधा प्यारी झुमक झुमक कर नाच रही थी मेरी राधा प्यारी जाने कहा से रासिर जाने आया छह लगे भारी डरता है देखो मोरा जिया मोरे पिया डरता है देखो मोरा such a beautiful and uh, graceful performance it was so now we'll go on to award for summer project so summer project as you all know is a phase where you can apply all your classroom learnings into corporate real world so it's really important to perform really good there so we have few of our students really performed uh, great over there in the summer internship so we'll award them for yeah. that uh, we would request professor purnima gupta to come to the stage and uh, give away the awards first award for summer project goes to heman bamola and rishab gupta heman bamola i would request rishab to come up on the stage and collect the award on his behalf guys can we have a round of applause for heman Second award goes to Ro Rose Koshik. 
I would request Amrit Anshu to come up on the stage and collect the award for her behalf. Question collect the award for her. A huge round of applause for Rose, guys. The next award goes to Harkiran Chabra. I would request Manish Soni to collect the award on her behalf. Guys, can we have a round of applause for Harkiran? Thank you so much, ma'am. Now we move on to culture performances. Next performance is from yeah. Animesh from BGDM. Sorry guys, there's a change. Uh, next performance will be from uh, Purnima ma'am. She will be singing a beautiful song. Guys, can we have a round of applause for Purnima ma'am? Hello. Hello. Hello, my Christian. Hello. मुझे तो टाइम ही नहीं मिला तो जो भी मैं जा रही हूँ गाने के लिए आप लोग बोर ही होंगे लेकिन आई नो यू विल कॉपरेट मी है
हेलो मैंने स्टूडेंट से पूछा था उन लोगों को गजल तो पता ही नहीं है तो मैंने अभी सोचा अगर सेकंड रिक्वेस्ट आएगी तो मैं स्टूडेंट्स के लिए गाती हूँ आई गेस आई यू ऑल नो दिस सॉन्ग कुछ अनजाना सा मुझको 
सभी जोर से बोलेंगे जय माता दी जय माता दी आवाज थोड़ी कम है थोड़ा जोर से जय माता दी थैंक यू ओ ऐसे लहरा के तू रूप रू आ गई धड़कने बेताशा तड़पने लगी धड़कने बेताशा तड़पने लगी तीर ऐसा जगा दर्द ऐसा लगा ओ तीर ऐसा लगा दर्द ऐसा जगा चोट दिल पे वो खाई मजा आ गया एक छोटी सी बात इसमें और वो तुम्हें दिल लगी भूल जानी पड़ेगी के दिल लगी ने दिल लगी के दिल लगी ही दिल लगी में दिल गया दिल लगाने का नतीजा मिल गया के दिल लगी ही दिल लगी में दिल गया दिल लगाने का नतीजा मिल गया मैं तो इसलिए रोता हूँ मेरा दिल गया तुम क्यों हंसती हो तुम्हें क्या मिल गया हो ऐसे लहरा के तू रूप रू आ गई ऐसे लहरा के तू रूप रू आ गई वो धड़कने बेताशा तड़पने लगी धड़कने बेताशा तड़पने लगी तीर ऐसा लगा दर्द ऐसा जगा तीर ऐसा लगा वो दर्द ऐसा जगा जो दिल पे वो भाई मजा आ गया वो मेरे रश के कमर तूने पहली नजर हाँ मेरे रश के कमर तूने पहली नजर जब नजर से मिलाई मजा नजर से मिलाई मजा आ गया वो मेरे रश के कमल तूने पहली नजर मेरे रश के कमल तूने पहली नजर जब नजर से मिलाई मजा आ गया 
थोड़ा सा देखिए दिल पे कोई नहीं लीजिएगा ये थोड़ा सा ऐसा गाने जा रहा हूं किसी के दिल पे लग जाए तो प्लीज सिर्फ एंजॉय कीजिएगा सिर्फ एंजॉय हां जी अरे हम बंदे हैं प्यार के ओ मांगे सब की खैर और हां नहीं किसी से दोस्ती नहीं किसी से पैर ओ मेरे अंगने में मेरे अंगने में तुम्हारा क्या काम है मेरे अंगने में तुम्हारा क्या काम है रे जो है नाम वाला आ जो है नाम वाला वो ही तो बदनाम है मेरे अंगने में तुम्हारा क्या काम है फरमाइएगा वो जिसकी भी भी मोटी हां जिसकी भी भी मोटी उसका भी बड़ा नाम है जिसकी भी भी मोटी हां मोटी हां मोटी जिसकी भी भी मोटी उसका भी बड़ा नाम है बिस्तर पे लिटा दो अब बिस्तर पे लिटा दो गद्दे का क्या काम है मेरे अंगने में तुम्हारा क्या काम है
वो जिसकी भी भी लंबी उसका भी बड़ा नाम है जिसकी भी भी लंबी हाँ जिसकी भी भी लंबी उसका भी बड़ा नाम है कोठे पे लगा दो हाँ कोठे पे लगा दो सीढ़ी का क्या काम है कोठे पे लगा दो सीढ़ी का क्या काम है मेरे अंगने में तुम्हारा क्या काम है रे जो है नाम वाला वो जो है नाम वाला वो ही तो बदनाम है मेरी जोहर जवि तुझे मालूम नहीं मेरी जोहर जवि तुझे मालूम नहीं तू अभी तक है हसी और मैं जवा तुझ पे कुर्बान मेरी जान मेरी जान मेरी जोहर जवि तुझे मालूम नहीं तू अभी तक है हसी और मैं जवा तुझ पे कुर्बान मेरी जान मेरी जान वो जिसकी भी भी छोटी छोटी नाटी छोटी नाटी छोटी नाटी जिसकी भी भी छोटी उसका भी बड़ा नाम है जिसकी भी भी छोटी उसका भी बड़ा नाम है गोद में उठा लो आ गोद में उठा लो बच्चे का क्या काम है गोद में उठा लो बच्चे का क्या काम है मेरे अंगने में तुम्हारा क्या काम है और जिनकी बीबी काली है कृपया वो भी बुरा ना माने वो जिनकी बीबी काली वो जिनकी बीबी काली उनका भी बड़ा नाम है जिनकी बीबी काली उनका भी बड़ा नाम है आंखों में बसा लो अरे आंखों में बसा लो सुर में का क्या काम है आंखों में बसा लो सुर में का क्या काम है मेरे अंगने में तुम्हारा क्या काम है जिनकी बीवी नहीं है यंगस्टर भैया जिनकी बीवी नहीं है उनके लिए कृपया ध्यान से सुनिएगा वो जिनकी बीवी ना हो अरे जिनकी बीवी ना हो उनका भी बड़ा नाम है जिनकी बीवी ना हो उनका भी बड़ा नाम है फिर क्या सबको अपनी समझो मजा नहीं आया भैया एक बार उठा के बिल्कुल सीधे हाथ वो सबको अपनी समझो बीबी का क्या काम है सबको अपनी समझो बीबी का क्या काम है मेरे अंगने में तुम्हारा क्या काम है मेरे अंगने में तुम्हारा क्या काम है जो है नाम वाला वो ही तो बदनाम है जो है नाम वाला वो ही तो बदनाम है अरे YouTube में रिपीट देख लेना यार टाइम नहीं है क्या बात है संजय जी आपने माहौल बांध दिया बहुत दिल से गाया लगता है वी आर रिज्यूमिंग विद द अवार्ड्स द नेक्स्ट कैटेगरी इज क्रूजिंग कॉन्क्वेस्ट डोर्स टू फैसिलिटेट द अवार्ड्स आई कॉल अपॉन द स्टेज प्रोफेसर बीबी सिंह Can we have a can we have a round of applause, guys? The first award goes to Apurva and Nikhil. I would like Garima to accept the award on their behalf. Hold it.
Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for responding. <laughs> so, uh, this is this award is being given for the first time, and uh, we see that the order of the day is competitiveness, and we want each of our students to be very, very competitive. Given the changing dynamics of the world, given the changing skills which are required, we want our students to be able and willing to work in any circumstances, especially in time constraints. We need the students to be very adaptive. And with that, we wanted that students should compete in a lot of external events. Ultimately, each one of you is going to compete with not the students here, it is your peer outside. So when do we train for it? We train for it now. And that is how we want that all students should be participating and increasing the brand value of their CVs to the extent possible. In addition to that, I also want that there should be a lot of joy. Every moment here has to be celebrated there has to be certain events, certain occasions where we can express our joy. And this is, I think, that competing with others and winning will definitely add more joy to the journey of PGDM and PGPM. With that, I announce Apurva and Nikhil to have, as the cruising conquistors, Cruising Conquistadors. I don't know who named this. Itna mushkil, itna mushkil naam. Kisne kiya tha ye? So Apurva and Nikhil have won eight uh, uh, first prizes and four second prizes. Along with that, there are certain individual prizes also which they have won. A great round of applause for Apurva and Nikhil. The second award for the same category goes to Ginja, Gunjan and Hitesh. And I would like Shrijita to collect the award. Gunjan and Hitesh have also won a lot of prizes. Four first prizes and, second, uh, and seven second prizes. It's a delight to see these people doing very well. And of course, there are certain individual prizes also. A great round of applause for Gunjan and Hitesh. The winners have uh, pursued, they have wanted to have academic excellence as well as competitive excellence. And they are the pride of the warriors. Congratulations, heartiest congratulations to them and all of those students who have participated in these kind of contests. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Next up, we have Animesh from PGDM1. हेलो गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन तो कविता है इस बारे में कि कोई कवि है जो उसके असल जिंदगी में क्या चल रहा है वो ना बता के कुछ मन गणंत कहानियां बता के लोगों को गुमराह करता है तो एक तरफ तो लोगों को सुन के लगता है कि बहुत अच्छी है उसकी जिंदगी बहुत अच्छा चल रहा है पर पीछे क्या चल रहा है किसी को पता नहीं होता तो उस पर यह कविता है इसका नाम है दोहरापन मैं रंगों के दृश्य दिखाऊंगा चाहे जिंदगी कितनी भी बेरंग हो मेरी मैं दिलों के जुड़ने की कहानियां सुनाऊंगा दिल में भले दुश्वारियां कितनी हो भरी मैं नगमे प्यार और वफा के सुनाऊंगा अंदर समेटे हुए नफरत और बेवफाई अपार कविताओं में अपनी समुंदर से लड़ जाऊंगा भले टूटी पड़ी हो नैया मेरी इस बार हर धुन में ज्वाला का सा प्रतीत होऊंगा भले भीतर की भीतर की आग 
बुझी हो अभी जोश से भरपूर खुद को दर्शाऊंगा भले अंतर मन की शक्तियां छिण हो सभी मैं कवि हूं इतना तो कर ही सकता हूं दो जिंदगियां एक यथार्थ और एक काल्पनिक तो जी ही सकता हूं थैंक यू एक एक और है सबको कभी ना कभी जिंदगी में प्यार होता ही है और ये कविता उस प्यार को बयां करने से पहले के बारे में है जब आप बोल नहीं पाते आप महसूस करते हैं मगर उसे बोला नहीं जा रहा तो वो इंतजार पे है कविता नाम है इंतजार हाँ मैं इंतजार में ही हूं कि कब तुम अपनी जुल्फों को सवार कर अपना दीदार कराओगे कि कब तुम मेरे कंधे पर अपना हक कर अपना हाथ मुझ पे भरोसा करते हो ऐसा जताओगे कि कब तुम वो एक शरारती मुस्कान लिए मेरी ओर एक बार देखोगे कि कब मेरी नादानियों के जवाब में नाक सिकोड़ते कहते पागल हो तुम पूरे ऐसा बोलोगे हाँ मैं इंतजार में ही हूं तुम्हें बिना रुके एक टक देखने के लिए रात का ढलना तुम्हारे संग देखने के लिए तुम्हारी जुल्फों को सुलझाने के लिए तुम्हें खुद में खूबसूरती से उलझाने के लिए बंदिशों को दरकिनार कर तुम्हें चाहने के लिए और अंत में हमारे एक होने के लिए थैंक यू That was a great performance, Animesh. Now I welcome Soumya Jain of PGDM One with a rare talent of reverse singing a song. Good evening, everyone. So you might have heard about singing, but today I am going to perform reverse singing, as I can sing any Hindi song in reverse. So the first song I am going to sing is "Zara Zara Mehkta Hai" from "Rehna Hai Tere Dil Mein," from the line "Yuh hi baras baras kali ghata barte." Yuh sarab sarab lika tag se rab mara ya gabi e ja. सईता चाकी शरीबा में री में लिखो लिखो टोला को लाचू तूरी में ओली गौ से मैं तो हूँ सी शरीबा में दिरसा की शरीबा में मह एक हो रहे सही रद चा में महनो दो हांत थे सब ई को ही न सही रग में रज रज तह कम है तह कब है ज तोरा में नत न दब मैं सी आफू जिमू रब ले पहोबा में द नेक्स्ट सॉन्ग आई एम गोइंग टू सिंग इज जीना जीना फ्रॉम बदलापुर फ्रॉम द लाइन दहलीज पे मेरे दिल की जली हद पेरे में लादी की जो घेरा है रे तू मदक रे ते नमा पेरी में गी दंजी खाली दी रे में मद मा खासी ने में ना जी ना जी ने में ना जी खासी ने में ना जी रे में मद मा एंड द लास्ट सॉन्ग इज Balam Pichkari from Ye Jawani Ye Diwani. From the line, itna maza kyu aa raha hai? Na te jama yog chahar hai ne tu vah se gham bhaya lami. Na dushana yog khohar hai khoa se thami ne tu ya laki. Ye ri te lam lam ki tere ko bilagu hoiga. Tu to dhal sa ki jab icha hoiga. मलब का चपी जो ने तुझे मुरी मा तो दी सीधा सिरी छो बिराश होई गो 
What an interesting performance by Soumya. We'll resume the rewards from here. Uh, so here comes the final uh, award for best club for the year. So Any guesses? Any guesses for the best club of the year? Okay. Okay, so uh, to announce the award, I would like to request I would like re uh, to request Dr. Sanyal to come onto the stage and give away the award. Good evening students, good evening faculty members and my dear non-teaching staff members, everyone. Good, very good evening to all of you. Uh, this year, uh, on the 12th Foundation Day, we thought of instituting, in fact, three awards. One was, of course, the Women Achievement of Achievement Award for the faculty and staff members of the Institute, which we have given out during the inaugural session. And for the student section, we had two awards. One, Dr. Uh, VP Singh has already announced for participating in various functions, or various competitions. And I thought that was very important award before I come to this award. Because that actually, uh, you people, whoever has participated, I'm not talking about who are the winners, they have congratulations to them. You have done an immense job in taking the brand Great Lake Institute of Management program forward. Let me tell you, so my a big round of applause to all the students who keep participating Winning or losing is fine, but participation is where, wherever they know. Now with that, our name spreads everywhere. In a short period of time, we have made a name in, a, in, in India now, and because of yours. Now I come to the second award, with a new award we started. There are a lot of clubs are competing, some clubs are doing very good, some clubs are not doing very good. So, so we thought of acknowledging the club, those who have performed well. A lot of clubs performed well. The tough competition between two clubs, one was, lastly, there were a lot of competition. It boiled down to two clubs, one was sports club and one was the marketing club, if I'm not wrong. And, and the difference was point one, I believe. And the award goes to, any guesses? Any guesses, please? It goes to the marketing club, so I request the marketing club along with the mentor to come over here. Mentor, without mentor nature, award will be cancelled. Where the mentor? Your mentor. Where is he? Oh, where is he? Dr. Mohit, he was here just now. Where did he go? <laughs> we'll shift it. Akhtar, you have done a fantastic job, I tell you. A lot of activities in sports this year. 
sports culture they have done fantastic i i don't know the club it was at the university but other team but i have seen what i have seen anyway come up come up come up a huge round of applause for marquis team <laughs> Before I hand over the, before I hand over the award, let me tell you, the entire team member, along with your mentor, gets a special T-shirt from our side. And please give your sizes to the administration, Miss Jaya, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jaya is there. Please give it to her uh, uh, tomorrow or day after. We'll get it done in a short period of time, along with your mentor. He's not playing, so I'm good, you know. So I'm good. Too. <laughs> all the congratulations to you. and all the clubs who have performed and i look for more competition next year thank you so much ah here he come yeah so he also gets a t-shirt <laughs> Oja sir, please join me. It's too heavy. I cannot pick it up. Please come with me. Oja sir, कहाँ गए आप? Hello. Hello. All right, guys. First of all, uh, fantastic work done by the team. Uh, great set of people over here, and congrats to Marquis. Yeah, I do. Not, I'm a man of fewer words. Like at least on stage. <laughs> so yeah, congrats to uh, all of us. Yeah, and uh, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you to the uh, team who selected us, saw our work, and kind of appreciated it. Thank you to Professor Sanyal. Yeah, that, that's it from my side. Do you guys want to say something? <laughs> all right, thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, sure. Uh, so thank you all for this award a special mention for our seniors for the pgdm second year who are not here with us i suppose quarantined so special mention for aditi and nikhil who have guided us who have supported us and who has been with us in this journey to make us capable to stand here thank you guys congratulations marquis once again uh we have one of the culture performance from uh, dev tonu from pgpm uh, hello everyone so good evening to all of uh, you present over here i'll be singing two songs uh, first i'll start with kya mujhe pyar hai I guess most of you have heard it so please hum along so i'll start
Thank you guys. So the next song, it's Zara Zara from Rehna Tere Dil Mein. So I'll start. Behkta hai, mehkta hai. Aaj to mera badan, mera pyaasa hu. Mujhe bhar le apni baahon mein. Zara Zara Behkta hai Mehkta hai Aaj to mera Tan badan Mein piyasa hu Mujhe bhar le Apni baaho Meri kasam Tujh ko sanam Dur kahi Aaja Ye duri Kehti hai Piyas meri तड़पाए मुझे अभी तेरी बातें एक बार दीवानी झूठा ही सही प्यार तो कर मैं भूला नहीं हंसी मुलाकाते बेचैन करके मुझको मुझसे यू ना फिर नजर टूटेगी ना मुझसे मेरे साथ या ये वादा कर तेरे बिना मुश्किल है जीना मेरा मेरे दिल में जरा जरा बहकता है महकता है आज तो मेरा तन बदन मैं प्यासा हूँ मुझे भर ले अपनी बाहों में थैंक यू सोचा मेलेडियस परफॉर्मेंस 
So next is uh, Tarun from PGPM. Hello. Yeah, just a uh, uh, you know announcement. Uh, we have the dinner for the students laid out at D block lounge, and for the faculty and the staff, we have in the A block. Uh, we can follow up for the dinner, post the performances over here. Thank you. मेरी सांसों को मुझसे दूर तेरे पास और मुझे हुआ ऐसा Okay, boss. Now let's listen to the rhythm of Chennai. Raya Raya na raka se nube paite se atta do peste. Pa pule si pa de pa de pa 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 pule si pa de pa de pa pa. Raro raro na si vakasi agi raje si si nube peste. Pa pule si pa de pa de pa 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 pule si pa de pa de pa pa. Hey, na dai the sappa bite kulti gada. Majapa, Majapa, da 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 da. Hey, ready to go? Come on, party, come on, what's up? such an energetic performance by tarun so before concluding the program sportscom has a, a short teaser uh, yeah please do watch thank you everyone for staying us throughout the event and now the dj floor is open also for students dinner will be served in d block d lounge and for the faculty to be in faculty mess so guys you can enjoy the dj thank you thank you
ਰਹਿਣੇ ਕੇ ਨਿੱਕੇ ਖਰਚੇ ਤੋਂ 